Hello, hello everybody. This is Reen Boom. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know you've missed me dearly, everybody. My fans, 337 people. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. So I've been having this idea for quite some time now. I really wanted to do a podcast and then just, I don't know, for some creativity outlet to have it out there. Something that I'm interested in, but I could never really pinpoint exactly the idea or, or the direction that I wanted to go to or into. And finally, finally, very recently, I've come to this realization that it is books and we're going to make a book club. I don't know how ever many people are going to join in on this, but I would love to see some support and recommendations and we could maybe have a little bit of a, I don't know, a virtual book club together. I think it would be great to have like-minded people. Also, I am in need of good recommendations for fantasy roman romance. It's been a really long time <laughs> since I found one. So um, let me get started on how I came to this just being of a bit of a bookworm and having more time at hand to read more books than I used to. So I... Maybe a year ago, actually, around a year ago, m maybe even more right now, I think around September last year, I had a feeling and I just felt like I really don't like Instagram. I hate it. It's, I don't want to sound too whatever stuck up or anything, but in my understanding, I had this realization. I was like, I follow some people that I haven't met or I haven't seen since I was in, I don't know, like seventh grade or eighth grade or ninth grade you know things like that and it's been maybe seven or eight or nine years since then okay that's a little bit of a exaggeration <laughs> like i don't know how many exactly like uh, no yeah nine oh <gasps> nine years nine ten years yeah so anyways i i think the last tipping point for me was when i saw a story of this guy that i knew from um like back 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 at the time not even from my school, but just like from this after school activity that I went to, how he posted him driving. Um, and just, you know how you film usually how you drive and then, um, I don't know, your hand on the wheel or whatever it is. And I just looked at this story and I was like, why am I looking at this? This is, this is ridiculous. Like I'm wasting my 30 seconds <laughs> on this. So, and then the next story of a girl, I remember was just her eating a pancake and I, already then, like, I didn't have that many followers as well to start with. Like, I cannot complain that, oh, I was so public. <laughs> like, no, of course not. But to me, I was just like, 200 people have access to my life. And, like, of course, I don't think they care because I don't think anybody in this world really cares. Or at least I think they shouldn't care. Like, why would they know where I'm at? And why would I want them to know what I'm doing and what I'm up to? You know, like, th things like that. So I was just like, eh, I don't really like it. So I deleted my main Instagram account that I've had for years, like super long. And I had then a break of two months. I didn't really use Instagram at all. I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't go on it, whatever. And then my friends, it was my last year of uni. So my friends were like, no, Irina... Ari, like, we want you, we want to see what you're up to, blah, 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 it's really fun. And I felt like I wanted to share as well some things. So I decided to make another account, but it was only for, like, I don't know, 15 people that I actually kept in touch and talked to. And then that's it, like, no one else had access to this account. I then made it public because um, I just wanted, I was curious to see if anybody <laughs> was looking at it, but nobody was. It's okay, I'm very, like not too important of a person so yeah anyway so that was another proof of mine that just like instagram in general it's very like it's just a convenient convenient thing to have because you have an easy access to every single person if you wanted to reach out and see them and find them but then for me even with this small account minor account that i had i was just thinking that look with those 15 people i keep in touch without Instagram even like I use other messaging platforms to send pictures of what I'm up to or to send like videos I for example Telegram and WhatsApp right now they have those like uh, video messages which I love personally there's also Snapchat that I still use with like maybe three friends you know so there are other means of communication that I feel like are much more effective than just Instagram so anyways 
So I had that account until July and then in July I deleted it for good and I had a lot of free time at hand and I just, I couldn't understand why and what to do with it. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay, so I need to really come up with a hobby then or something that I do in my spare time because I can no longer passively scroll through social media because I don't have, I decided to not do that. And so I started looking into it and I came across a, a girl that is... Carrie reads I think her or Carrie loves books something like that um I will maybe link link it here but she was talking about how to start reading more uh for entertainment is crucial in your minimization like of social media time I don't think it's a word minimization or it is a word I think it is a word anyways how it is crucial to like minimize your, minimize, there you go, not minimization, but minimize your, or is it a word? Oh my God, okay, I'll Google it afterwards. But um, it's very important to minimize the time that you spend on your phone by reading books that are for entertainment purposes rather than solely for educational purposes. Because it's a gr- it's great to have a mix between the two because if you only read very heavy literature with very heavy lexicon and very like, technical terminology that is used to describe a certain concept or a certain idea that you're learning about and it's more of a non-fiction reading it's going to be very hard for you to dynamically go through it because it usually takes longer to digest the information that is being presented to you just because it is heavier and it's not as like oh he said that she said like it's not a dialogue it's a very heavy literature material right that your brain needs time to process and so this girl was saying that like no you need to read books for entertainment the ones that you just pick up and you if you're very into it you can finish the whole book in one go and then you just forget about it and so I started doing that I started doing my research and I actually want to go through the list of books that got me into the genre and got me reading and really made a difference into my reading and journey because right now my screen time is down maybe to two hours a day or I mean, I'm not going to say one and a half hours because I still have to like reply to things and do things on my phone. But overall, like it's two hours, I think, two and a half hours, maximum maybe three hours a day that I spend on my phone. And I mainly spend it to like catch up with my friends and just uh, reply, I don't know, to emails. I do have TikTok and I scroll sometimes. But again, it's not like two hours of scrolling. It could be, I mean, 30 minutes maybe or 40 so yeah, anyways, let's jump into the books that got me into the genre and there's just this habit of reading instead of scrolling. So the first book I read was actually um, just sci-fi fantasy without really any romance. It was just really cool fantasy book that I really liked. And it is called The Darkening by Sonia Sunya Mara. I think, I don't know how to pronounce it, to be honest. And it's this whole idea of, it's a bit of, Ugh, it was so good because it was dystopian and it was just this, um, there was this uh, underlining statement of classes in a society and how some are more privileged than the others. And it was just a little bit more extreme, I would say. But I loved it because there was also Storm and how like Storm brings out the worst nightmares and creatures and nobody comes back alive and intact, basically. So I love this. I honestly it took me a day to read it. It was great. I recommend it to everybody. And I think I can see it on Goodreads now that it's number... Oh, there's the second book that came out. I need to read that. That's going to be on my TBR list, guys. The Light Struck. I'm going to get back to you next episode because I'll probably read it uh, sometime soon. So yeah, that was the first book that I read. Then I got into the uh, romance fantasy. I didn't even know that was a genre, but then apparently it is very popular. And that is something that I'm very obsessed (laughs) with. And that was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black series. So by Holly Black. So that was the series of The Cruel Prince. Um, And it's called The Folk of the Air. And there are six books in total in there. And I loved it. The whole idea there was just like this um, two mortal twins that they live in the fae world. And I I can't even remember now. I think their mom was like, or maybe their half fae. Anyways, I don't remember exactly how they ended up in this world. But um, it was this idea that they were living alongside the fae and this royalty fae hated 
one of the main characters, but then she turned out to be the baddest bitch of them all. Loved it. Character development, plot twist, amazing. Also read it maybe in under the under one week, like all those six books. And then after that, I was like, I need to read something more depressing, you know, something heavier. Like, make me cry. I want to cry. So I read A Little Life. And every single person I saw on TikTok, book talk, reading this book, everybody was sobbing. And I'm a very kind of cold, cold person in general. So for me to really make me cry, especially in a book, it has to do something either with dogs <laughs> or very, very heavy things. This book made me tear up. I didn't bawl my eyes out, but it really, towards the end of the book... Um, when this main thing, I don't want to, I don't know, maybe people, most people read that, but just in general, when the, the biggest kind of shitstorm happened to the main character, I was so heartbroken and it was also for me so unexpected. And there was so much that just the spectrum of emotions, like the guilt, the grief, the anger, all of it was portrayed so deeply and so well. Wow. Like it was. I mean, I gave five stars to this book. It was amazing. I think it, it needs to get every single word there is that is possible. Okay, then I read another book by Holly Black, Book of Night. Uh, I can't remember how it ended. I guess I didn't like it that much. I gave it four. I, oh, I actually gave it four stars. I mean, maybe that was good then. I like Holly Black's writing in general. I think her style is amazing. And she can really dynamically get through the storyline and develop characters. And it seems... And you kind of forget that you're reading a book. It's more of like you're watching a movie or you're living through it. Like, it's great. And then I was like, let me switch up to something more spicy. And then I read the Bonds That Tie, two books. I hated them. I gave them like two stars each. Oh no, I actually gave one star <laughs> to the second book. I, I didn't like it. It was like the first book kind of had the potential at the beginning. But then it just became, I don't know, very superficial. I didn't really like the plot. I didn't even see the plot, to be honest. It was just very meh. I don't know. Um, then. Oh my god, my favorite series, I think, this year. I have to give it to that specific. Oh my goodness. Sarah J. Moss, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. They, the four books I read, I didn't read the um, Court of Frost and whatever it is, like the 2.5, I didn't read it, or 3.5, something like that. Didn't like it uh, from the beginning, so I was like, I'm, I'm teaching myself to not finish reading something that I don't like so I just kind of left it off but the court of thorns and roses a court of mist and fury a court of wings and ruin and a court of silver flames my goodness I could not put the books down like I read those four books maybe in five days it was ridiculous I didn't sleep I didn't sleep for five days and also at that time I was visiting a friend in London and so every like I don't know, every second I got when I was commuting, I was in the tube or on the plane, right? Whatever, like just all this time I was reading. So I finished one book and then I started the other book straight away. And I remember we were sitting down with a friend of mine and like we were getting ready for dinner and she had to do some work things. And so she was like, uh, could you please wait? We'll be out in about in like 30 minutes. I was like, yeah, okay, no problem. And I read this book and she asked me, like, what are you reading? Like, you're so engaged and it's like involved and absorbed by this book. And I said that it was the Akatar series. And she promised me that she would read it as well when she's done with all the, her deadlines for work. And so she did. And she loved it as well. And she's the type of person who hates, like, fantasy romance. And th these four books, or five books, she also read the Frost one. But these five books got her into the genre. And now we have a book club with her. So now... <laughs> We are reading the same genre for entertainment. Um, anyways, like I love the books. Um, I think I gave the first one. Uh, oh, I gave three stars. I was Tamlin. That's why I didn't like Tamlin. Okay, the second one, Mist and Furry, I gave four stars, and then the last two five stars. I loved them. Then the next book I read was Babel by R. F. Kuang, and it's not romance fantasy. It is more like historical fantasy. My I uh, it was a bit of a switch after Akatar series, but I think it's a great book, and I think it needs to be nominated for. I think it was chosen as the best book of the year, 
but I think it has to get more prizes and awards because it was it was so good because it not only touched upon a very big social issue that we have just even now still even though it was talking about colonization but even now this still this concept still can be applied to our modern world then the way she developed the complexity of relationship between humanity like between humans just people in general not necessarily just relationship like there was no romance in this book whatsoever it was just the complexity of relationship between people who were like not necessarily bad bad but they were just born in different surroundings and in different with different values and understandings of what is good and what is bad the norms whatever it is like it was just you know it was great I was very much it took me longer to read this book but I loved it Afterwards, I was like, okay, let me read something more fast-paced. And I saw the book talk was just going around about Shatter Me series. Honestly, I don't want to offend anybody, but what? I started reading this and I was like, uh, I know what's the plot going to be. What, what is the plot of this book? Like after first 20 pages. It was so clear. I don't know. It was just... Mm. I mean, I understand that it's young adult and it was released in 2011. So maybe some years passed and it's just not as... I don't know. After the other works that we can read now, maybe it's not that catchy. I don't know. But I I finished it in one day and I was just like... Meh. I don't know. So I didn't read any other book from the series. But then I picked up Fourth Wing. Mm. Good one. Loved it. I gave it four stars. And I think... Okay, hear me out. So, the beginning of the book had so much potential. It was so great. So great. The dragons, the love triangle. My goodness. Everything. But then, the main character just became like a flop. You know, very, like phlegma. And it was like, girl, like get it together. And I think because I had these feelings towards the main character, which is not bad. Like a book m needs to make you feel certain things. Like I think that what that's what makes a good book a good book. But then I was just like, yeah, you know, I just got annoyed. But the cliffhanger at the end and the plot twist was amazing. Five out of five or ten out of ten. Um, and then on the same day that I finished this book, there actually the second part came out. So I was like, that's just a sign. I need to read the second part. Read it, didn't like it. Um, too much was going on. There was no a lot of depth into the characters and just the, I don't know, everything. Like, I know a lot of people might feel very different to this, of course. But I just felt like a lot was going on and it was not very well developed. And it was just really cringing sometimes even and I didn't like the way their relationship developed and the end of the book as well it's like oh for god's sake what is next that you know it's just kind of like eh. I mean I enjoyed it it was a very fun and engaging read but yeah I don't think I would read another part of this series then I listened to an audiobook from blood and ash I had a lot of kind of like walking and just like cleaning and housework uh, house chores to do so I was doing that and I finished this book also like in a day or two um I don't even know the plot right now Con honestly I can't remember it it was good like I it was nice I think it was about maiden like a holy figure and um like she couldn't figure out what is wanted from her blah 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 so she went uh, down this sinful path and she met a wet vampire pam 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 Anyways, I think one book from this series is enough for me. Then, <laughs> then um, for my book club with my friend, uh, we decided for shits and giggles to just read Born to be Bound. It's like this alpha male, alpha omega trope. Um, honestly, not fun. It was just so uncomfortable. It was so... I don't know, it was just very, like, there were a lot of trigger warnings from the get-go, but I was just thinking maybe it would be a spin-off, like, it usually is in the dark romance, whatever, but even for me, I was just like, that is too much, and that is just not, 
appealing or interesting whatsoever so i don't know i really didn't like it but also i was very curious because it has a relatively high rating on goodreads so i was very confused why do people like it and apparently it's like almost number one book in dark romance and i was just like uh, okay i don't know it was just very badly written i guess so i gave it a one star and I just finished two to two right now the dark uh not the dark academy but the zodiac academy. I just finished the first book and I kind of like it, so I'm gonna give it a shot. There are nine books though in this series, so I don't know how that's gonna go, but yeah, so we shall see. Starting that in that cl book club. So guys, guys, I know I'm gonna probably post this on TikTok. Honestly, we need book club recommendations and just book recommendations and if that goes well and if you anyone who's listening to this you like it I can do more of those like it doesn't take me I'm just gonna sit down and talk about whatever I'm reading and my thoughts on that it's gonna be our book club um or you could also suggest me books to read I would love that because I need some good recommendations because I've been doing my research but I feel like everything is so repetitive so I need something new yeah and more exciting anyways guys that is it um whoever listened till the end you are my rock star thank you for being here um maybe i'll see you next time maybe i won't i don't know we'll see how that goes but anyways thank you for being with me and keep on reading guys bye